Um, and one of the questions is uh, how is your uh, mobile uh, tracked by Wi-Fi? Um, why does the municipality of Enschede wants to know uh, who, who you are and where you are and stuff like that? Um, is anonymous data, is, is that a real thing or that, is that only in story? Um, and uh, what you can do to get more better privacy for yourself. So in the end, I give some do-it-yourself instructions uh, if, you'd want to, if you are inspired by me. So a um, little bit about myself. Um, so I started as a uh, biscuit, like uh, many of us, with the Commodore 64. And in that time, you get uh, real books with it, how to use it. So not only a warranty claim, uh, but uh, you could really uh, learn how to program the Commodore 64. So I programmed it in, uh, with uh, BASIC, um, and that's kind of was for my introduction with uh, computers. And I also saw the rise of the internet. Yes, I'm that old. Um, and um, yeah, uh, and it was becoming very clear that privacy is going to be an uh, issue somewhere. Uh, and I was a big fan of uh, PHP, uh, and that's for encryption, but it's another story. Um, so I was always interested in technology and, and how it works, and yeah, get, get to know what it is and what the uh, um, challenge uh, might be. Uh, in 2011, I started my own hackerspace in uh, Enschede called Tuckelab. <laughs> um, and at Tuck Lab self, I also give uh, uh, workshops and lectures, um, also about 3D printer, laser cutter. Uh, but also I gave a uh, um, kind of discussion group for, uh, about the sleigh bed. Uh, it's already a few years ago. Uh, but also about the corona melder. Uh, that was kind of techno the, the technique they used was yeah, good. And some people say, yeah, it is on the mobile, so it is, can be good. So. I try to explain why it's good and what they do to protect your privacy and stuff like that. So that's a little bit about my uh, background. Um, for this story, we have uh, three parties involved. Um, you have the Autoriteit Persoonsgegevens, uh, as we say in good Dutch. Uh, that is the DPA for the Netherlands. So uh, if you have any complaints about privacy issues, you can uh, ask them to look into it, and then uh, they should uh, do a little bit of research and then uh, come to a conclusion. Um, another part is the uh, RMC, uh, and RMC is kind of a um, consultancy firm for uh, retailing, um, but they don't uh, do only co uh, re uh, consultancy, but they also uh, keep track of uh, statistics so a city know how many fishes they have, uh, but maybe how to improve the city itself and um, yeah, that kind of uh, advice. And of course, uh, the municipality itself that got the fine. So, um, to understand what is happening, I first have to explain a little bit uh, about uh, Hash. Um, yeah, he is all technical people, so it's more for the people at home, of course. <laughs> Uh, so, a hash is a um, um, one-way function. So, if you uh, and the original uh, meant for files, um, and you get a uh, hash from a file, and it's kind of fingerprint. Um, and if you only change one bit in the file, original file, and you do the same hash again, you get a totally different fingerprint. Uh, so that uh, that way you, you can check if the print, fin print uh, fingerprint match between files, and if the fingerprint, the hash match, you can assume that's physical, the same file. So that is kind of technology that is behind it. Um, you can see how, how a hash kind of looks. So this is a SHA-265 uh, hash, um, and you have all kind of different hashes. Um, so it is one way. So if you have the fingerprint or you have the hash, you cannot uh, recalculate it back to the original string. Um, so it is, yeah, you can only do one kind of calculation. 
Um, yeah, and uh, if you do the uh, calculation again and again and again, uh, it still always gives the same hash. So, um, and they use the hash for the city traffic method, and that's the way the company explains how they use it. Um, and um, if you walk around in the city, um, uh, and even if you're not logged into a network, uh, the, the mobile is going to shout around, uh, hey, home network, are you there? Um, and if you have an, a sensor and you uh, do a little bit tweaking uh, on the sensor, uh, the sensor can hear that. Um, and that is the basic of, uh, of this whole technology. Uh, and that way you can see the MAC address of the uh, Wi-Fi chip inside your mobile. So the MAC address is kind of serial number to your mobile. Um, and the city traffic method uh, uh, means that they make a hash from the MAC address and they only use the first uh, 12 characters. Uh, they do that on the sensor um, and then send the hash uh, together with uh, the sensor ID date and uh, time uh, to a temporary database. And, they, um, and that, that is done the pseudo anonymous code, so they say, yeah, we have to, it's not totally there. And in the next step, uh, they uh, put it uh, in a, uh, the, the database for the statistics, uh, and they remove the last three characters, and that is called, uh, it's uh, anonymous. So they say, yeah, we have now short hash from, uh, from a MAC address, um, and that is privacy proof. And they don't explain why it is price proof, so yeah, <laughs> I have some questions there. <laughs> um, they uh, always use the same hash, so if you want to do a hash, a hash itself is, it doesn't say anything if it's safe or not. Um, but yeah, what shit traffic could do is uh, use an, uh, a salt or a seed every day and put it together in the, with the input strain, so you get every time another hash total. So, uh, um, but they didn't choose for that, so since they started with the Wi-Fi tracking, um, they always had to use the same method, and not only for Enschede, but also in all the other cities that they are active in. Uh, and that means if you walk around in Enschede, uh, they can see what uh, Mac you have, then it's going to be translated to the hash. Um, but you can see the same hash if you walk around in Henlo or one of the other cities that city traffic is active in. Uh, and they store the data for six months in total. So, um, yeah, and, uh, um, and I think of what's going to be a, a big point in the end if um, there is a relation between the MAC and the person itself. And um, you know, the municipality and uh, RMC says there's uh, no uh, real one-to-one -one relations between those two. Um, yeah, I, I, not, not, I don't agree uh, to that, uh, because if you know the original hash, and you know how to calculate, uh, sorry, if you know the original MAC address, and you know how to calculate the hash, you can do the calculation again. So, yeah, it's, it's still one way, uh, but that way uh, you can check, uh, hey, is this MAC address belongs to this hash? Uh, so that, that's um, yeah, kind of black and white uh, discussion uh, about that. Um, and another uh, important point, point is, um, yeah, the MAC address itself doesn't mean anything, uh, but it's kind of unique. Um, and they do jump around numbers and stuff like that. And they say, hey, we have now something that's uh, anonymized, but it's still a unique for a person. So, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think that is not a good way to do that. Um, and we can see that uh, because the AP did some research about the database. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's very small uh, uh, colors, uh, stripes on the... Um, Slide and uh, this is uh, um, a few weeks. Yeah, you don't see me mice. mouse. Um, so this is a few weeks, and every night at uh, f between four and five uh, a.m., 
Yes, uh, there's an, a peop, some person is walking around uh, uh, by a sensor. And you can see that it's ki kind of steady. And uh, he's those that are only from Tuesday till Saturday. So that's kind of the naughty wall, nightly, nightly walker, if you call him Peter. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the fact you can do something like that uh, means that it's not uh, anonymized. And still they say, yeah, but we don't, can't point to one person. Yeah, I, I don't re, uh, agree to that. Because in this case, if you, uh, if you know where the sensor is, and you're going to uh, yeah, uh, gonna stay there for one night on the right uh, moment, probably it's only one person that's going to buy it. So. And that is not so hard. Oh, yeah, this is a zoom in. Yeah. And another story, uh, another person they found in the database is uh, uh, probably in a resident. Um, so um, RMC says, yeah, we filter out persons that are resident, resident there. And they do that if a person is there between 5 and 7 and in the evening between uh, 10 and 11. And if the person is there on both uh, times, uh, then they assume that the person is a uh, resident and is not included in the database. So what you see here is uh, all the days there's no uh, marks. That's probably the days that was successful. And other days, uh, maybe uh, the, the phone was off, or maybe he was late at home. Uh, uh, late uh, at home, so he was not there between uh, 10 and 11. So that, that is included here. Um, so that is not good uh, also. Sorry. How did you get this data? Uh, I, I didn't do that. The uh, authority, uh, the DPA did it. Uh, so I, I, I didn't do. I, I didn't have any data. So <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> um, and I did. I, I counted the days here. Um, and it's around, uh, it looks like it's working only for 50% for the cases. Uh, and it should be 100% yeah, or something like that, so, yeah. Um, so, what we can, uh, what is kind of the conclusion about the city traffic method? Uh, yeah, that removing uh, three positions of a 12 position hash is not sufficient to have an anonymity. Uh, because we saw just a few persons, and uh, we can't yeah, kind of identify them. Already? Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, juggling around with hashes and stuff, that doesn't work. Um, yeah, I have to uh, hurry up a little bit. Um, so uh, to, to uh, make something uh, uh, anonymous, uh, it's very hard to do that right. And also uh, many uh, data sets are published and they say, yeah, it is fully uh, anonymized and uh, researchers do the, their magic and uh, hey, we see persons. So that is not good. Uh, okay. Yeah. And it's not about the current law, but it's also for laws in the future. Uh, and you can see for the, um, uh, uh, the uh, new uh, laws in the USA about abortion, there's a lot of uh, discussion about location and apps that uh, store data and stuff like that. So you have to be critical, not only for what's happening now, but also what could happen in the future. Uh, so. Uh, so the, uh, the municipality gets a fine of uh, 600,000. It all started on uh, 6 September 2017, and they uh, announced it. Uh, they were proud, we're going to do that, and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and right from the start, I had some questions about, yeah, but nice you do that, but how it's called, how is the security uh, uh, taken care of, and stuff like that. Um, and that uh, I also uh, filed a complaint with the municipality itself, didn't work, and then I filed a complaint uh, with the AP. Took a little bit of time, uh, but in the end, the uh, fine was uh, signed, and it was uh, big news, so... Um, I'm going to hurry on a little bit. <laughs> uh, 
so uh, in the official complaint, I had uh, some uh, yeah, official reasons why they shouldn't do that. Uh, so the first reason is the municipality has certain tasks. And uh, yeah, tracking around people is not a task of the municipality. So that's the reason one. Uh, reason two, uh, it should be proportion proportional. Uh, so um, you have to balance the, the, what you do and what you're going to store about data. And um, yeah, what, what is the impact for the person itself? And um, that was a good, not a good way to do that. The third reason, um, and I find that the most important one, um, if you walk around in the city, you should be uh, un unobserved. So you should be uh, around without people who are tracking you. Um, and it's uh, a law in the, the, the Dutch law, in the UA law, and human rights. So, and yeah, because it's law, we shouldn't have a discussion about that. So I find sometimes strange we have a discussion about privacy, but that's a whole other story. Um, yeah. And the last one is uh, uh, they, they should consent uh, that. Just like if you go to a website, you have the cookies uh, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that is not part of the Wi-Fi protocol, but that is not reason to do that anyway. And the uh, RMC said, yeah, we have an opt-out register, so you can uh, register your MAC address there. Yeah, it's kind of strange you need your MAC address for that. Uh, um, and in the talks, uh, uh, they uh, said that not many, use, many users used it. So for a city like Enschede, you have to think about 10th, 20, 30, something like that. So uh, you could, of course, t turn off the mobile and all do all uh, kind of other things. Um, but it is kind of the upside down world. So you should be able to walk, walk around where you want. And you shouldn't be do, do all kind of strange things to protect your privacy. Um, uh, so uh, when, when this was public, Enschede, uh, said, uh, yeah, but we did never had some kind of warning. Uh, and that's not fully true. Uh, because the AP already sent some letters uh, before the discussion. Um, and the, that was kind of the uh, summary of the letters is, yeah, you can use Wi-Fi tracking, but only in very specific cases. So uh, like uh, in big events and uh, crowd control and uh, that kind of situations. 24-7 uh, in the inner city is not a special case, I think. So, um, yeah, and uh, what I already said, uh, yeah, hustling around a little bit of data with MAC address and uh, hashes and stuff like that is not uh, enough to uh, do the privacy good. Um, and RMC is the stakeholder, or the, he has a commercial interest in this. Um, I think the uh, municipality of Enschede listened a little bit too much to the company. Um, and if they had uh, the um, yeah, external uh, specialist on the right uh, moment, uh, maybe they could uh, avoid this uh, fine. So. Um, I'm going to skip this one. Um, so. I get some sometimes remark from, oh, you're special, you do this, and uh, stuff like that. But actually, I didn't do anything special. So it, this is something that everyone can do. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, uh, because you have to wait long times before answers and stuff like that. But um, yeah, in the end, um, I only spent two or three weeks actual time to write letters and to write emails and stuff like that, uh, spread out over four years now. So that is not so bad. Um, so I wrote uh, two formal letters, um, and I uh, keep track from, hey, I should have an answer now. I don't have an answer. What is the status? So, um, and most important, you have to be stay polite, friendly, and you have to yeah, be persistent uh, and don't uh, let, let it down. And if you do that, uh, I think everyone can do that. So. <laughs> And if not, you can email me or Twitter me or whatever. Maybe I can help you out. So, so and this is just some numbers for the fun. So this was kind of my uh, speech. So uh, we have some time for questions. So yeah, thank you very much. Okay.
That was a good applause. Thank you. Thank you. So any, are there also any questions? So if you have, please come over here to the microphone because then also the people at home can hear them <laughs> and they like it. That's easier. Yeah, just take that one. That's, a, that's the best one. A complaint about the DPA is that they are quite understaffed. How, made, how did you make the case that this was worth for them to uh, pursue? Uh, what I did, I just uh, wrote a letter um, uh, and, and pointed out all the points and then the DPA itself is going to investigate and, and say, see if it's really uh, worth the effort to do that. And uh, the EPA, uh, DPA in the Netherlands is uh, uh, understaffed, uh, so they have to be picky about what they do and what they don't do. So, so but, your letter but, uh, was good enough. Hmm? Sorry? The letter was good enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did, but did they explain, like, uh, this is about the amount of people that are tracked or about location that's more sensitive? Why did, how did they weigh it that high? Uh, the, so there is a report with uh, five, uh, 58 uh, pages. Uh, and the, 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 the uh, nightly walk is also in there. Uh, so if you can re re read Dutch, you can read it. <laughs> or otherwise, you, I don't know if you can uh, translate uh, a PDF easily in Google Translate or something like I that. Can, I can read Dutch. Yeah. Oh, OK. So re re read the uh, uh, report. So. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. I live yep. here. So. No problem. <laughs> cool. Question from the back. Right. Okay. So I was wondering if it was considered that the MAC address can be actually completely reversed because you have only a couple of, you know, a MAC address has like six bytes and the first three yeah, bytes yeah, yeah. are known. There's only a couple thousand OUIs, yeah. which is a list of thousand or so yeah, yeah. Uh, combinations that are fixed and the last is 24 bits. And considering that we have um, like this um, crypto Bitcoin machines that are incredibly quick in actually generating all these, I think it can be recovered in real time. Yeah. But I also think with a, you don't even need a really big rainbow table to do a lookup table that is incredibly quick and doesn't need too much uh, space, actually. Have you considered okay. this? Because I think the whole scheme can be completely reversed. Uh, I, I considered it, uh, but I didn't do the math what you actually need for a database and calculations and stuff like that. So. But I'm familiar with rainbow uh, tables. Do you want me to do that for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but right now, it, it's, I, I'm not involved in the discussion anymore, so... Uh, Perhaps the municipality wants. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe we can talk later, so... <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Try this one. Yeah, ah, it does work, it does work. Um, I found this feature on my phone. It says, in the Wi-Fi settings, randomize your MAC address. Do you know about it, and do you think it helps? Uh, yeah, but in this case, it was already, we started in 2017, so that was not as common as now. Uh, and they filter out the uh, yeah, random addresses, but I don't know how many people uh, of the yeah, normal uh, do that. So. Yeah, it is quite new, indeed. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So, okay. And how is, it, how is this now done for all the other municipalities who all, where this also was done? Uh, they, they wait for what happens, what's going to happen in Enschede. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, very, uh, yeah, they really track, keep tra track uh, about it because it's, uh, yeah, if something happens in Enschede on a Wi-Fi area, yeah, it's not only for Enschede but for all your municipalities and maybe even for your Europe. But I, I'm not uh, sure about that. So. And they, do you know if they stopped it in all the other months? Uh, no, no, they stopped it, so they don't, don't do it anymore. So. Well, um, I have a question about the fine, because did, where did the money go to, the 600,000? Did, did the government just fine the government? Because yeah. then that money <laughs> will just end up with the government again, so yeah. what point does it make? Yeah, yeah, but, but this is more about um, principles itself, so... <laughs> All right, but then the <laughs> but, but fine you, itself you, you, is pretty Yeah, it, it, the government gave the fine to the government. That, that's <laughs> right. I think the, the news and the amount of money might harm the careers of the people in the government, or harm, make them war, think twice again on this. Yeah, I, but I, I was curious about that as well. How, how was the reaction of the municipality? What, did they agree in the end? That no. <laughs> <laughs> totally not. <laughs> oh. Now, the, uh, almost the first response, we, uh, we're going to fight it and then we're going to uh, go fully in it. 
so the, they already spent uh, 145,000 on the lawyer's cost, and the process has to start. So uh, yes, I'm very curious uh, if everything is finished. Uh, what the, uh, the costs are, and if it's maybe then even more than the original fine. So, so the government is suing the government as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but it's very principal, and uh, Enschede itself wants to know, but they also want to know for the other municipalities, and yeah. That makes sense. So that, that that's probably the reason why they do that. So, <laughs> cool. Any more questions? I have a question for the audience. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow, cool. Uh, so, uh, I know the, in Germany the, uh, they are very strict about privacy laws, but it's totally unclear how the Wi-Fi tracking or this kind of things works in Germany. So, if someone knows details about, details about this, I would like to hear that. Cool. Anyone who wants to say something now? That might be a bit yeah. quick. Otherwise, afterwards, walk to the speaker? Or yeah. is someone... No. No. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Thank you very much.